Hello, look who we have here. Today we have Bjorn. Hi guys. And we're talking about totally unexpected question about how do you use external things? How do you scout samples? How do you find them? And what do you do? Like what happens if you find like two years old sample on Bjorn's GitHub and then you use it and modify it? Do you contribute it back? Do you, do you make a fork? and other related questions that what is on our agenda today right yeah that's true right. yeah we have an ever-growing community of uh, developers not only game developers but developers doing extensions and libraries and and there's a treasure trove of stuff to find treasure trove but let's let's start from the very very basics like the asset portal there yeah. is so much stuff on the asset portal however even and, and, and there is lots of your stuff on asset portal and lots of things that people from default team, uh, they created it and they have it on the asset portal. But if I look into your GitHub, if I look into others' GitHubs, there are even more things there than on the asset portal. Why is that? Well, I guess it's, uh, for me, I, I, I put the really reusable stuff on, on the asset portal, things that I know have a value to other developers uh, and that are tested and hopefully works on, on all the platforms that default supports. Then I have a lot of experimental stuff and things that I haven't really finished yet and things that aren't in a shape that I want to share them on the asset portal. But still super because that, that's, that's kind of the most official uh, way of finding assets in default. It's the asset portal. And right. So the finished stuff on asset portal, the experimental and finished stuff on uh, GitHub. How does a default user find stuff on GitHub? Because there is your GitHub, Matthias has GitHub, Sven has GitHub, uh, Alexi has GitHub. Lots of people have GitHubs and they post their default things there. How does a default user find that? Yeah, that, that's a very good question. Uh, I mean, there's no really agreed upon system, but the de facto standard is that you add a topic to your uh, mm -hmm. extension. So if we, if we just take one here, Monarch, which is the screen library that's kind of everybody kind of popular. Loves that everybody loves. Yeah. Uh, and as you can see here uh, in the GitHub repository, I can set manage topics here. I can add topics or tags. Mm -hmm. uh, some are suggested by GitHub themselves, but uh, the standard seems to be that you name it default so that it's searchable just as any kind of default related So what happens if you click on the default? Yeah, then we will get anything with the topic default. It could be an extension, but it okay. could also be like a game. So right. here we have Sven's uh, GUI library, the editor to issues uh, yeah. project, and there's and bound to be both uh, extensions and games. Right, by both, by, by our team and by our community. And that's a fine, that's a fun way to explore things, yeah. probably. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and then also, if you want to specifically find libraries, then I recommend that you search for the default dash library topic instead. Then you see stuff that is designed as a default library that you uh -huh. can depend upon in your uh -huh. own project. Uh -huh. And that is not, yeah. Which also means that if you, who is watching that, if you have a, a default extension or library, you should add this tag. If you and also default tag, and if you have something else default, you just put a default tag, and that's the way everybody in this world can find easy default thingies on GitHub, right? Yeah, that's what we recommend at least. One more thing before we proceed. So for example, with uh, any of your extensions or like Monarch, if you switch back to Monarch, yeah, uh, what I see is that people just stick to the latest version. And then whenever you update, say Monarch, it gets updated yeah. in people's projects. And sometimes it makes sense to stick to a particular version. How does one do that? Well, I, I, I would always recommend that you stick to a specific version of a library. Uh, sometimes there are breaking changes. And uh, if you're close to finishing in a project uh, and you depend on the master branch, and all of a sudden the extension developer has made a breaking change, 
you do fetch libraries and then you're screwed because you have a breaking change in your code. So the recommendation is always to depend upon a release. Mm -hmm. And in the case of Monarch yeah. and, and many other repositories, you have the releases uh, option here. And here's a list of all of the releases I've made of Monarch. Uh, I follow a major, minor, and micro versioning scheme, which means that if the first number, the major changes, mm -hmm. then it's a breaking change. This is a new feature, and micro is just like a bug mm -hmm. fix. And if you want to depend on Monarch 2.17.1, you do right click, source code, copy the link, mm -hmm. and put that into your default dependency right. instead of the master branch. Cool. Now, what if I, as a default user, I've used this 2.17.1 extension, and then like, mm, I want some feature, and I've added this feature, yep. or maybe I fixed a bug. What do I do? Do I keep it as a fork, or do I make a pull request? And how do? What do you think about me, like putting stuff into? Yeah, I, into I mean, if you want, to, if you only want to use Monarch as it is, then you only add the the, the link to mm -hmm. to a release. But if you have a feature request, then uh, I would really recommend that you create. Uh, it says issue here, but it could be for anything. It could mm -hmm. be a bug, or it could be a feature request. You could okay. request me to add it, but if you don't want to wait for me to add it, or if you don't feel that the thing you want is something that should go up into the main repository, then the recommendation is that you do a fork. And we have actually five forks here. Uh, Who so did them? Uh, good question. Let's have a look. Okay. So uh, Alexei, someone I don't know, uh, yeah. Subso. Brian, hello, Brian. Yeah. And to others, so they yeah. forked it and and um, uh, maybe made their own changes that they want yeah. to keep for themselves. Uh, but if you do a change on your fork and then feel that it's actually good stuff that you want to share with anyone using Monarch, then you should do a pull request from uh -huh. your fork into into the. And uh, how do you, how do you look this pull request? Like, what do you get, and what do you refuse to uh, to get? Well, uh, in the case of Monarch, for instance, I have unit tests. So I would really like to see any pull requests adding new functionality also add tests. Mm -hmm. And the unit tests are run every time you do a commit. So it's done on CI. And you see down here if the builds are passing, the code coverage. So all of that should, I, I would only accept larger feature changes if they contain tests as well. Right. But if it's just a small bug, uh, something fixing documentation, then I just see that it follows the standard mm -hmm. and it has like, yeah, good but grammar, and then I accept it. If you see that, for example, the qu the code quality is not on par with your code, or or you have suggestions, do yeah. you do you talk back to the user saying, look, improve this, and I'll happily merge this back to 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 Monarch? Yes, I think that's that's the. Uh, general philosophy for any open source project that you you should contrib contribute, but if you get feedback, you shouldn't feel. Uh, no drama. Uh, no, no, exactly, no drama. It's, it's, uh, it's part of the open source mindset that you, uh -huh. that you collaborate, and you get feedback, and you make changes, and, and iterate on the, on, on the pull request or change until yeah. it's like perfect. And it's always good to have. If you know that someone is going to review your code, you you will always you know take it that extra step. Yeah, uh, and just by looking at how we work internally at at uh, in the default team, uh, there's a really good um, good feeling about doing pull requests in when you worked on a feature, and, and it's it's you you value the feedback you get because the product and and you yourself. Become better. Yeah, improve as a programmer. Like listen to Beyond's feedback and improve <laughs> as a programmer. Uh, but one thing that you mentioned, and I feel like we want to highlight that, is that instead of raving in chats or putting stuff on the forum, it may make more sense to do the issue on the particular wrapper of the particular extension or code and maybe mention it in the forum if you want to. 
instead of just having a forum thread, hey, I'm using Monarch, and it doesn't work the way I'm using it. Probably it makes more sense to have the to have the question in the issue on the GitHub. Am I right here? Yes, that's correct. I mean, it, it's it, we encourage our users to use the forum as much as possible. That's the the main meeting place for any default yeah. user. But uh, now that we have uh, a few really popular uh, extensions, Monarch is one. DefOS by uh, Subsoap, and, and it, that's. By the way, a really nice collaborative effort. A lot of developers are doing really good work on DevOS. We have the Instant Games extension and, and some others that are super popular. Uh, and uh, I mean, it's nice that our users talk about them on the forum. But in general, if there is a problem, it should be created as an issue on GitHub, as we saw. But if I don't know, so I'm using Monarch. I'm default user. I'm using Monarch. I don't know if it's my problem, if it's Monarch's problem. Do I raise it as an issue, or do I start the forum thread? Or do I bo do I do both actually? Um, maybe I mean in that case, it could be either way. But if you want, since Monarch is my project, I'm the only uh, collaborator but on the project. But lots of people use it. Yeah, yeah, I know. But uh, if you post on the forum, then there's a higher probability of getting a, yeah. an answer because there's exactly. a lot of users. Exactly. So, so I'd say that if you're uncertain, then uh, post on the forum, and then maybe we follow up after some discussion with a ticket on GitHub. It's clear to me now. Yeah, great. So anything else that we forgot to talk about? Well, no, I think this covers a lot of it. Uh, and one more thing, maybe. I mean, we have the asset portal. That's the place where you should definitely add your assets if, if you feel that they're of value to, to anyone else. But uh, I would also recommend that you make a post on the forum about your added assets. Mm -hmm. So we have the uh, default mine um, uh, channel or group within the forum. And here, people post about extensions or assets that they've created. So this is a good way of getting a lot of our users aware of the new extension, because I don't think people always go in here and check every day if there's a recently added extension. So the forum would be a very nice way of announcing your new extension. And on Slack as well, but the forum is yeah. the main place, I'd say. I feel forum gets more yes. traction. Yeah. You know, I think we forgot to mention one more thing, like one more thing from you, one more thing from me, a license. So oh, I yeah. think it's MIT that we suggest people use on their own extensions. And most of your things are MIT, I think. Yeah, uh, I mean, you should pick an extension that's, that's, uh, that works for you. And, uh, and if you work for a company, you, of course, should talk to um, the, the legal people. Cares yeah, exactly. <laughs> from the legal but side. otherwise, I mean, uh, uh, MIT is, is a good one. Uh, there is the GitHub has a, um, a site for helping you pick out the right license. But MIT is very permissive, and, and yeah. I, I, I think that's a good choice. Yeah, there are tools on the internet that help you to yeah. pick the license. I think it's use a license, yeah. yeah. So I think GitHub is behind this one, or right. uh, has at least some input here. So that's anyway, a this way. is a really nice um, site to help you if you're uncertain. And if you don't want to spend time on this, MIT, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, MIT. That's good. MIT. So, and that is all for today, I guess. And we have to say goodbye. Yeah. See you next time. See or you next time. See us next time. Exactly. Bjorn, what is your normal voice volume? Uh, it's something like this, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Is it good enough? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm checking it out. Yes, yes. Now we are recording here.